Hey, what's up guys? We're back today for not a live, but this is going to be more a little bit of an educational video. I don't consider myself the best player uh, of Pokemon in the game. Obviously, I'm very far from being the best, but I think I have good enough experience to give you guys a little bit of intel. This is a game that I had with a team that I made for UU. I was going to do a UU live for today, but I just didn't have time and uh, I... Just trying a couple of teams, some things weren't working, I tried to make a Cloister team, that wasn't working. I eventually came up with this team, and I am gonna, uh, I'm gonna bring this to you guys as a live, a uh, UU live with this specific team tomorrow, and then we're having, gonna have our RU live on Friday, as the PW, uh, PWM is currently on a hiatus for a week or so, because of the fact that a lot of people were just not very reliable and weren't showing up to their games, and... Basically, we're replacing a lot of players, so uh, the PWM is going to take a uh, back seat for right now. That's going to give me a little more time to work with, so now I have this team ready to go for tomorrow's upload, and I'm going to try to make another RU team as well. So, before I keep rambling on here, I just want to give you guys a little bit of an instructional video on how to play against teams like this. As you can see, this guy has an Espeon, a Ditto, a Shedinja, and a Wobbuffet. This team is can destroy the, the UU metagame if played correctly. So I'm going to show you how our game went. I'm going to play this at uh, normal speed so you guys can see. So he leads with his slacking and I lead with my Azelf. And I'm like, okay, well, I can U-turn out. Test if he's scarfed. I still have my focus sash. And I go into my Rocky Helmet Physically Defensive Arcanine. This is a very balanced team. So you can see that Arcanine takes that very well. But this damage tells me that his slacking is banded and obviously not scarfed because it didn't outspeed his elf. So here I'm going to go for the Morning Sun. Just gain, gain back some health. His slacking couldn't attack again in consecutive turns. He brings in his Wobbuffet. I'm like, okay, well, I can status that with a Will O Wisp. Makes a nice play in Espeon, bounces it back. I want to gauge the damage from his attack, so I go for a Flamethrower on this turn, just to see how much I do to him as well. His Psychic does way too much, so I switch into my specially defensive Vaporeon. Normally Vaporeon is run physically defensive, but I have a special one on this team because I have a physically defensive Arcanine. So I take that relatively well, and I'm just going to go for a Wish here, and as you, can, you guys can see, that does 37%. So I know I'm playing with rolls a little bit, but I decide to go for a Scald here, and he's going to allow me to hit his Slacking for a little bit more damage, and I'm going to get right back up to near full after the leftovers. And now I can uh, protect to see what he wants to lock himself into. He goes for Earthquake, so obviously if he goes for another Earthquake, I have a Levitating Mon being his Elf. I can easily switch out into that. So I predict his Espeon, and I go for another Scald. So I'm weakening his Espeon. This is Magic Bouncer. But it's choice specs. I didn't know the damage calc, so I wasn't 100% sure, but it is specs. Tricks me on the wish, uh, but now I can go into a Zelf because I know that unless he hits me with a Shadow Ball, nothing can uh, really knock me down to my Sash. And I'm going to go right back up to 100%, and that's exactly what I need. And now I can U-turn out, and he decides to bring in his Slacking. I was kind of afraid of him bringing in his Shedinja here to, uh, to be immune to my U-turn, obviously. But... He goes into slacking, and here I go into Sceptile, because I know I can knock this thing out with a Dragon Pulse. And here is where the game, um, I didn't understand this play really. He goes into Sceptile, into Ditto, and turns himself into Sceptile, and he goes for Dragon Pulse when I clearly have a Slurpuff, and he's obviously Scarfed, so... I was like, okay, well let me go into my Slurpuff now, scare him out, and I'm actually gonna pull a double again, and I'm going to hit up Arcanine. And now I can Morning Sun and get back my health, and he's gonna pull a Volt Switch on this turn, and I believe he uh, Volt Switches out into Wobbuffet if I'm not mistaken. He could even go Ditto here on this turn. He goes into Espeon, actually. So, I know that Arcanine can't take the hit too well, even if this thing lost its specs, so I just decide to go into Vaporeon. Vaporeon still has its stats, it can take this Psychic uh, no problem, especially now that his Espeon is not specs. And I decide to throw off a Wish right here, I believe, no, I pull a, a double back into my Arcanine, predicting one of his slower Pokemon to come out. And he's going to go back into Espeon, and I'm going to be able to Flamethrower this thing and knock it out. Now his Magic Bouncer's gone, so I can get up rocks, uh, I just need to get rid of the Spinner. 
That's all I need to do. So I burn his Wobbuffet as he encores me. I was expecting that. I was like, okay, well, that doesn't really matter. I go for another Will-O-Wisp as he uh, obviously is not affected by that. He's already burned. And he goes for a Safeguard. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I won't be able to burn the next Pokemon that comes in. That could be a little bit of a problem. But he chooses to go into Ditto anyway. So didn't really make a difference. I wouldn't have been able to burn this regardless of the Safeguard. So all he can do is Flamethrower me. So I can pretty much stay in here and just Will-O-Wisp again. And now his Encore, I believe, is going to end this turn. And I'm going to be able to Morning Sun back up. But I actually choose to switch out into my Vaporeon on his next Flamethrower. Luckily, he doesn't get a burn. And here, I think, is where I throw off the, the Wish that I was talking about before. Uh, no, I pull yet another double back. And I go into Dawn Fan this time. And his Shedinja doesn't really want to stay in on an, a potential knockoff. So he goes into Fortress. And this is where I don't really understand uh, his plays coming up here. Uh, so he goes into Fortress, obviously can't stay in on the Flamethrower, he chooses to go into Wobbuffet. I'm weakening this thing little by little, I did not want it to get a counter or a miracle off on me at any given moment in this game. So again here I'm just going to Morning Sun, he's going to Encore me again, that's perfectly fine. He doesn't have anything that can hurt my Arcanine anymore. Even though I let it take 75% at the beginning of the game from Espeon, I knew that I could heal it up throughout the course of the game and I knew that it was my way of winning because after Espeon and Slacking are gone, Arcanine doesn't have anything that threatens it anymore. So here he's going to go into Fortress, he's going to set up a layer of spikes, I'm going to knock off predicting him to predict me to go for Rapid Spin, as he actually just stays in, I'm like, okay, well now he's going to go into Shedinja, right? No, he's going to stay in again. Alright, I'm like, okay, so this guy doesn't really want to switch into his Shedinja, he sees that I'm just going for knock off repeatedly, maybe he thinks I'm banded. He's going to get a crit on this Gyro Ball, a little bit unfortunate, not too big a deal though. Here I'm going to go for the Rapid Spin and get rid of his spikes. He's going to Gyro Ball, and here I expected him to set up another layer, but he actually chooses to Gyro Ball me again. Again, and my Earthquake is a two-hit KO because we are offensive Dawn fan. So we're going to be able to get rid of the Fortress. Now he doesn't have a Spinner anymore. So Shedinja is dead once I get up rocks. So he brings in his Ditto. Dawn fan's a little bit of a threat. But I have Vaporeon as he chooses to go for knockoff. Next one won't take me out. And I can just wish up here. And I believe on this turn I go into... Or do I stay in here? I don't believe I stay in. I actually go into my Arcanine because I know I can take the knockoff, he'll take the Rocky Helmet damage, and my Arcanine doesn't gain the wish, but it's fine because as you guys are going to see here, I'm going to Flamethrower the Wobbuffet, and after the burn damage, he's in range of another one. I actually get a crit on this turn, don't think it mattered unless I got an absolutely min roll, and even at that, his Miracle couldn't knock me out from, from taking only 20%. So here he's going to go into Ditto, and here I know that I can go into Vaporeon, sack it to the Flamethrower. And I can go into my Azelf, finally getting up rocks at the very end of the game. And basically what this means is that he has to go into Shedinja here, and he can no longer switch it out because his Rapid Spinner's gone. He has to also attack me on this turn, so I switch into Arcanine on his Shadow Sneak, and he goes down to Rocky Helmet. So as you can see, we were able to whittle down the team little by little, scout out the set on slacking. So if you have a good enough team to take on stall and also be a good enough defensive team to take on offense, you have a very good team on your hands. So that's how you, that's basically how you, how you have to build uh, day in, day out if you're going to be building a team to play on competitive, uh, whether it be on Showdown, whether it be on Wi-Fi. And here, uh, Ditto, if I just scroll over here, you guys are going to see. Uh, no, you actually don't get it here, but uh, it only has five, um, 5 PP for whatever move it's going for when it switches in using Imposter. So... I'm going to allow him to uh, use up all his flamethrowers, <laughs> and I'm just gonna go for Aurora. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to uh, let him kill himself and uh, knock himself out with the Rocky Helmet and the struggle, turning myself into a pseudo Garchomp right there. So that's gonna be the game, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the explanation. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I uh, hope you enjoyed the way that I played against that stall team. I was really scared when I saw it for, at first, and then I realized that I didn't have bad matchups at all, and I knew Arcanine could win as soon as I got rid of his two most offensive Pokemon being Espeon and the Slacking, and those are not hard to wear down, especially if they're both choiced. So that's pretty much it. Leave a like down below if you guys enjoyed. 
uh, hit me up in the, uh, in the description. My Twitter's there. Uh, if you don't want to leave a comment on the video, if you want to hit me up on Twitter. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Like I said, we're going to be getting another... Uh, we're going to be getting a UU Live with this team tomorrow. So don't worry, guys. We're going to have a full episode. It's not only going to be 10 minutes long. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks again for watching. Ciao.